So I love the Steam Deck. It's a phenomenal device and for the price I think it's absolutely spot on in pretty much every way. Because the Steam Deck's got an insane price to performance ratio. In fact, it might be the best bang for the buck to this day. That's due to the Steam Deck's custom AMD APU. It's optimized for low TDP environments and high performance. And competing handhelds use similar AMD APUs, like the Ally, the AN Neo, and the Legion Go, what have you. But they're all kind of generic. They all blur together in this soupy sea of Steam Deck wannabes. And because of that, I'm really not interested in any of them. They all basically use the same APU, they all have fundamentally the same inputs and specifications, very little across the board. Yet, the latest big OEM to jump into the game is doing something to stand out, and it's the MSI Claw. And I find it kind of exciting, honestly. The reason? Well, it's got an Intel CPU. Now, I know that there's going to be a lot of folks out there who think that that's the reason to avoid this thing like the plague. But honestly, I think it has a lot of benefits. Now, we've seen that this unit is capable of running Assassin's Creed Mirage, albeit with a bit of an inconsistent frame rate, but we'll get to that in a second. Nonetheless, it's an impressive feat for an Intel-based graphics chip. Besides the fact that this is pre-release hardware and these drivers could probably still use a little bit of optimization at the very least. Not to mention, when these drivers hit mainline Linux, they'll probably outperform their Windows counterparts, as is tradition. Yet, what lots of folks see as a weakness, I see as kind of an advantage. Sure, Intel graphics will mean that there are fewer massive AAA titles available on the claw than on other AMD-based handhelds, but frankly, I don't think that matters. At least, not if you're my kind of gamer. My most played games in 2023 were Spelunky, Doom Eternal, Bejeweled 3, Hades, Jackbox Party Pack 9, Dead Cells, Marvel It Up Ultra, Halo Master Chief Collection, and Burnout Paradise Remastered. Those are my top games in 2023. All of those games are several years old, and besides Doom, they are not demanding on the GPU at all. And that's really where handheld PCs like this shine anyway. Older AAA and smaller indie titles. So I'm not worried about having Intel XC graphics or whatever because most of the games I play will work just fine, and if you're anything like me, most of the games you play will work just fine as well. But the thing that has me most intrigued about the Claw is the Steam Deck's biggest weakness. See, the problem is you can't attach an external GPU to the Steam Deck. But with the Claw, you absolutely can. Now, you're not going to get a good experience with a 4080 since the Thunderbolt 4 port on the device will be a bit of a bottleneck for a card of that caliber, but pretty much anything under that class, you're in for a pretty good time. And I'm really excited to see Thunderbolt and the expansion possibilities that it provides on the claw. And frankly, I think it's non-negotiable for the next Steam Deck to offer USB 4 or Thunderbolt 5 so that upgraded docked performance can be achieved. Now, the question I'm still asking myself is, will I actually buy one of these? Truthfully, I'm not sure. I'm still super happy with my Steam Deck, both the one that I purchased and the OLED that Valve sent me. And I honestly don't see the claw being an upgrade per se, but it would be nice to have for some DIY projects I'm considering. So yes, I am a bit hyped for the claw, but there are a few issues that I'm seeing with it. I don't think all of these are deal breakers, but some of them to me at least are. Now I'm curious if you've seen any of the same issues I have, feel free to feed the engagement algorithm and leave a comment below. And while you're down there, you can like that smash button. It's the best way to tell YouTube that you wanna see more videos just like this one. You can also subscribe if that's more your speed. And thanks. The first problem that I see is, well, it ships with Windows. When are folks going to learn that Windows on a handheld PC is just not a good idea? Even Microsoft tacitly acknowledged that fact when the UMPC market evaporated nearly 20 years ago. So why do OEMs still push this trash on us? Like, I understand that there are more games on Windows, emphasis on the air quotes, and I know that the prevailing delusion among the majority of gamers is bigger number better. And that includes the number of games available on a platform. But I still genuinely don't get it. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we've seen Assassin's Creed Mirage running on this device, and it looks really cool, but the frame rate was inconsistent at best. 
And that's just from a three second clip of the game in one of LTT's latest videos. For me, performance is a real concern on the claw, mostly because of the Intel XE based graphics, which Intel is notorious for, but also because as we learned from LTT's hands-on video, the screen is 1080p. Now I've said this before, but handhelds with a screen above 800p are just not for me. And that's for three very important reasons. Number one is power draw. 1080p screens draw more power than 800p screens, and it scales from there. Number two is that 800p screen is about the highest you need on a seven inch screen. The rule of diminishing returns in this case specifically is exponential. And finally, and most importantly, the higher the resolution, the worse the GPU performance. Now, don't be fooled. DLSS and FSR are pretty cool technologies, but upscaling artifacts are garbage and I want nothing to do with them. I also don't want dynamic resolution. I want my games to run at a fixed resolution with stable performance and crisp visual clarity. The Steam Deck can do 800p most of the time in most games. That's the native resolution of the screen, so we're good there. But can the Ally or the Legion Go do the same? Can they run games at 1080p, which is more than double the pixel count, mind you, most of the time in most games? Working harder to fill the same physical dimension screen just does not make sense to me, especially for a handheld where power draw is so limited. And don't get me started about how 1.2 million extra pixels on a 1080p display drains your battery faster. Now, another issue that I think I see is the SD card slot. See, the ROG Allies design put the SD card reader right by the exhaust port at the top of the device, and the thermal stress was killing the card reader and even some SD cards. So why then would MSI do the same thing here? But by far the worst and most egregious issue with the claw is the lack of at least one trackpad. I'm sorry, but using a joystick to control the cursor on your screen doesn't even come close to cutting it. It's miles away from an even serviceable experience. It would be one thing if this device shipped with something like SteamOS, where you never had to interact with the desktop if you didn't want to, and you could access everything with the gamepad, but no matter how much Microsoft may try to Frankenstein their desktop operating system, they will never come close to a gamepad accessible paradigm in Windows at least not a good one. But realistically, I'm comparing the claw to the Steam Deck, and the Steam Deck provides two trackpads. A lot of people think that the left pad is useless, but that's because they have a lack of imagination and really haven't explored the potential here. In fact, I think two trackpads are an absolute minimum if you're going to play PC games on a handheld, but that is a rant for another video. <laughs> so with all that said, will I be buying an MSI claw? I still don't know. Of the Steam Deck competitors, the claw is the first one to really, truly pique my interest. So I'll be keeping an eye on it for sure, and I'll keep you updated when I make a decision. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. Are you interested in the MSI claw? Why or why not? Sound off in the comments below. Now, I think that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.